Hey everyone, welcome to our second tutorial on Motion Plus. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be dealing with mainly constraint uh, data as well as uh, baked path data. Um, I'm going to show you how you can uh, c consolidate all of that animation data into a single Motion Plus file. So let's start with an actor here. I'm going to be using our facial pipeline character pack, uh, Mr. Chimp here, with the uh, silly grin on his face. And what I want to do first for this chimp is I'm actually going to create a motion path for him to walk along. And then I'm going to have him push a cart along that uh, motion path and his hands are going to be constrained to the handles of the cart. All right, so let's go into the animation tab first and into a path. I'm going to create a path here and we can just uh, um, draw an arbitrary path along the uh, along the plane here. Just have a little bit of a curve, something like that. And you can just right click when you're done with that path. And the monkey's going to walk along that path in just a moment. But what I want to do first is I want to uh, give our monkey a walking animation. So we'll select our monkey, press the F hot key to zoom in on in there. And we'll use our motion puppet tool here. And now there's a number of different walks, um, uh, walk templates in the motion puppet there. You can see there's our basic walk. Um, here's our uh, cool walk. Much cooler than the basic walk, as you can see. Um, but uh, yeah, we're basically going to be using the cool walk for this. There's also a, a, a depressed walk. We can, we can use this as well. But our monkey's going to be uh, pushing a cart. So we'll just have something that uh, has a lot of arm motion because his hands are going to be constrained to the handles of the cart and the human IK is going to react uh, naturally produce uh, animation as a result. Um, so let's go ahead and record a couple seconds of this cool walk here. We'll record maybe uh, 600 or 700 or so frames there. And uh, once that uh, cool walk has been recorded we shall get around to putting him on the path. So there about 691 is good okay for there. And we'll just uh, press the uh, go back to frame one. And now what I want to do is go to the actor tab, and I want to select pick path for my uh, monkey here. So let's pick the path. You can select anywhere along the path there. Ended up at position zero zero. And um, when I'm finished, my uh, when my monkey's finished his animation, I'm going to put him at 100, the position 100 on the path there. So let's make sure our monkey's selected. I'll close on the project one. There's our motion clip. When does the motion clip end? Around here. So there we can uh, change the position of the monkey to 100 on that path and he'll disappear. But where do you go? He's over there. He's at the end of the path. So if we uh, just get a little bit of a bird's eye view here, you can see what's happening. There's my monkey kind of sliding, walking along the path. No worries though. I'm going to do a couple things to adjust that. We want to select follow path first of all. And in normal, normal paths like this along the plane, you just want to select a negative Y axis and the monkey will go along the y-axis here. And if we hold Alt and right-click, we can zoom down, take a closer look at this. You can see the monkey's kind of sliding a little bit. Um, we don't want it to be sliding too much. So what I can do, actually, uh, let's zoom out here a little bit. Open a constraint uh, track as well. That's where the constraint, that's where he's reaching the end of the path right there. Uh, pretty much approximately the same as when the motion clip ends. So what I can do is I can grab that motion clip, and if I toggle loop and speed sw switch off, It'll actually adjust the speed of my of my walk. So if the if the walk is uh, faster, there'll be less sliding of the feet. So you can see there we go. We can uh, just use that as a testing ground for uh, how fast it's going to be or along the entire path. So we got the monkey kind of walking along. Now we can just uh, toggle loop speed switch on again, and we can just uh, bring up another one of those. And uh, there we go. We now have our monkey just trotting along his uh, happily strolling along his path right there. So we're good to go. Um, now what I want to do is I'm going to bring the cart into the picture here. So let's uh, close down the timeline for now. We'll go to the set section here and I want to bring in my cart. I'm going to use the uh, Chinese Riverside uh, tools pack. Uh, props, we'll go to the unicycle section. Even though it's not really unicycle, we'll just add that in. And there is our uh, first cart that we're going to add in here. It's a little bit large for this monkey, so what we can do is we can uh, use the uh, R hot key and uh, scale that down to more of a monkey size. That should be good, and that's more suitable for our monkey right there. We don't need him to labor too hard. And we'll just rotate that around. Uh, let's put it on the path, approximately on the, on the same path as our, uh, as our path there, the trajectory of our path. Maybe bring that a little bit back so our monkey's hands can reach it. All right, so we're good uh, with the uh, cart. Now what I want to do, is I want to bring in a couple of dummy props. So in the set section, we'll go to the uh, 3D blocks. 
I like to use uh, cones for this. You can use whatever you want. I'll just drag in a cone. Um, press R to scale that down to a more manageable size. Let's uh, actually uh, make our monkey invisible right now so we can see what we're doing here. I'll zoom in and I'll basically want to bring my uh, dummy props up into the handles area there. There we go. That should be about good. And then what I want to do is uh, hold control and click and drag and that'll create a clone copy of that. So we have two identical triangles, or sorry, uh, cones rather. And what I want to do is make sure that first of all, the first item of business, I want to make sure those are attached uh, to my um, cart here. So I'll pick parent, that one selected, and pick the uh, cart. And you can see it's now a child prop of the unicycle uh, prop there. We'll do the same thing with the other one. So now those are both attached to the cart, uh, specifically to the handles. So let's make our uh, let's bring our monkey in again here. And what I want to do is um, now I'm going to select the monkey, go to the animation tab, and I want to use uh, some uh, reach constraint for my monkey. So we'll go to the edit motion layer tab, uh, tool rather, and uh, the reach target section here. And now what I want to do is select my monkey's hand and the uh, uh, teardrop tool there, and I want to select the left cone. You'll see the monkey's hand will attach to that. But we want to actually have the uh, reach um, constraint include the uh, rotation and, and um, uh, data as well. So we'll select a rotation reach object here in the uh, reach the sub node section and press OK. And you can see that messes things up a little bit. You can't really, his hand's kind of in a really strange position. But we'll fix that later, uh, no worries. Uh, I'll do the same thing with the uh, right hand here. Pick the target and we'll pick that uh, triangle. And again, we want to uh, reach the object and rotation there. And we're all set. Um, so now what I want to do is every time, now that my hands are constrained to these uh, dummy props, these triangles, or these cones, rather, um, we'll select the cone, and then we selected the one on the left there, I believe, or on the right, yep. And what I can do is uh, rotate the cone, and that will correspondingly rotate my monkey's hand. And I can move that as well. I can move it up, I can move it down, um, basically anywhere I'd like. Uh, move it along here, and we'll move it to a position where the monkey looks a bit more natural, maybe rotate that as well bit down there and the purpose of this is we just want to basically get those uh, hands in the general position um, where they look like they're holding the cart you can of course uh, refine the uh, position of the hands later if you'd like that looks about good for me and I'll select the other cone and do the same thing here so let's bring that around maybe uh, bring it a little bit back further um, of course this is using your W uh, and E hot keys for movement and rotation respectively and maybe just rotate that a little bit and bring that up again there we go and you gotta get it into a position where it looks uh, generally re uh, realistic Does that look okay and maybe a bit forward there we go alright so there we have our monkey constrained to the cart right there and if we're really, uh, if we're really fussy we can um, you know um, go in here uh, we have the monkey selected and go into our edit motion layer and we can just go to the pose and let's uh, let's bring our uh, bone size here down a bit uh, affect all to all bones bring it down to about one so you can see what we're doing see the mesh of the character and you can of course uh, you know grip these uh, hands if you'd like and maybe have the uh, the ring finger and the pinky a little bit curled a little bit more so as if they're grasping this uh, and on the right side we'll want to uh, that thumb out a little bit. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong side there. There we go. And we can adjust those uh, fingers. You can spend more time doing that uh, on your own. The purpose of this tutorial basically is not to do that though. We're going to um, press play now and see what our monkey does. You can see he's trying to walk along the path but he's kind of constrained to the uh, to the cart there so he's <laughs> went into a horizontal limbo position there and he's try continuing to try and walk along that path. So what we need to do is we need to actually um, create a transform. Um, we need to transform that cart to go along the path when the monkey is walking. So um, what I'll do is we'll go to somewhere um, maybe about uh, if we uh, press play, you can see the transform position of the monkey. The root transform position is kind of going along the path. So maybe about right uh, there, we can uh, take the cart and we'll uh, move that along to a proper position. There you go. And the monkey, the monkey just suddenly catches up with the cart there. 
make sure his feet are planted properly and make sure that the uh, cart is in a proper uh, rotational state, uh, in the proper position there, rather. Yeah, something like that. And just fool around with that. We're going to have to do this a couple times at different points along the path. So uh, feet are still planted there. Monkey's holding that cart just fine. And we'll move to uh, the next part. Um, make sure we select that chimp and see where his uh, motion path is. Maybe when it gets to the next point, we'll do the same thing and move that cart out further along the path. Um, you can see the monkey will catch up to it there. So I'll make sure again that the rotation of that is uh, correct. I want to, uh, oops, there we go. Maybe just move that a little bit back. There we go. And maybe that's a little bit too over rotated there. Just make sure that your monkey looks, uh, um, what every character you're using uh, looks looks uh, natural um, in his pose there. Yeah, we should be good. I'm not going to be too fussy over that. And of course, make sure that if you, you can see if I raise, if I go back, his feet will raise. I'm going to make sure his, his foot's planted right there in a good position. Let me go down to this view here. We can see better. All right, and we'll just do this uh, at the very end of my uh, animation there around... Uh, We'll select like the chimp again and see where his uh, transform root transform is there. You can see it walk along. We go right there. 691, I think it was. We can just uh, take that unicycle or that uh, cart rather again and bring that along. And monkey's miraculously again in the right position. All right, and that looks like it could be, should be okay. You rotate that a little bit. There we're good. All right, so let's see the results of uh, all that uh, transform uh, data on my car. Let's get a bit of a bird's eye view here. And they can see if I uh, press play, the monkey's kind of walking along. You can see the cards maybe sliding a little bit between those points, which we don't want. We can always correct that later with the additional, you know, transform keys. Maybe about here. I want to have that uh, cart a little bit closer to the original path that we wanted. There we go. And uh, that's, of course, if I press F3 and go into the timeline, you can see that's creating transform keys in my timeline right there. So you go here, we can do the same thing. Just to keep it, give it a bit of a regular uh, pattern here. All right, there we go. All right, so basically the purpose of this is to get that uh, natural human IK movement uh, as the monkey's pushing the cart. So you can see if I go back here, and I press play. You can see that uh, my monkey's walking along. His hands are constrained to those uh, those handles there, but the rest of his body is moving along. And uh, we can go ahead and uh, just uh, work with that. All right, so there's there's our motion there. Now, if I really wanted to here, I can actually just make that uh, wheel move as well. So it just looks looks a little bit more realistic. You get a bit of, a bit of a better uh, pre-visualization of what your final product will look like uh, in Unity or or Maya or whatever you're exporting to here. So let's go ahead and select our uh, our wheel there, and uh, what we can do here is we can just uh, open up our uh, animation or transform track rather, and maybe about every uh, let's control, let's zoom in a little bit on our timeline, maybe about every uh, 20 or so frames we'll just rotate this 90 degrees. So if we select our wheel, uh, we go to our uh, transform here. You can see if I rotate that along the x-axis, that's the axis I need to rotate it along. So at frame 20, we'll put it about uh, 90, press enter, and then we'll go to like frame 40, and do the, pull that to uh, 180, and frame 60, we'll go ahead and put that to 270, and I think you can see where I'm going here. Um, at frame 80, let's put that back to uh, 360 or 0. All right, so then I can select these uh, four keyframes, and uh, every 20 frames I can just copy those, copy to frame 100 there. Control V, paste that. This, uh, next frame here. It's nice to use those uh, those gray keyframes. It's easier to tell where to paste. Let me just do that again. I'm just pressing Control V all along the path here, or all along the timeline rather. Frame 420. And let's do it a couple more times, and we should be good to go. All right. So let's. Uh, Take a quick look at uh, what we're going to look like with the final 
product there. You can see our monkey happy, happily whistling, uh, pushing this cart along the uh, path. So basically the uh, motion data that's going to be um, exported to uh, FBX is the uh, path motion data as well as the uh, constraint data for my uh, monkey um, and his hands constrained to the uh, cones there. If you want, of course, um, if I select those two cones, um, let's control select all the two cones there. If I go up here, I can set them as both as dummies and you can see that the uh, bounding box turns red there and I can press control D and make them disappear. That's uh, toggling dummy visibility on and off. All right, so there we go. You get a little bit of a better uh, look at uh, the monkey. And of course, you can adjust uh, the hand position, refine that later as well. Um, so what I want to do first is let's press F3 and go into our timeline. And we'll make sure that our monkey is selected. Our chimp is selected, rather. Keep on calling him a monkey. He's a chimp. Um, and then we want to um, click and drag. We open up our, our, our collect clip track here. And then I want to click and drag in the collect clip track the uh, area that I want to capture. So that's about to here. Uh, let me just uh, alt and rotate around here. That's about that's where we want to end up right there. You can see sliding a little bit along the end there. So we just press control plus. You can see that uh, about here is where we want to. Uh, have that uh, constrained end. There we go. Boom, something like that. Okay, so there we're good. We're good to go. And zoom out a little bit again. Click and drag in that click clip track. We can drag that side. We can drag this side to the end of the constraint. And let's zoom out again. And this is the animation that's going to export in my FBX. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, first of all, with my chimp selected, I'll have the actor go to the actor tab there, and we'll edit the chimp in 3D Exchange. That'll import uh, Mr. Chimp into 3D Exchange here, and then I want to go back into iClone and right-click in my uh, collect clip track there and add Motion Plus to 3D Exchange, and that'll bring in my uh, walking clip of the chimp uh, pushing the cart there. Let's see if we zoom out to get a better look at his uh, trajectory there chimp walking along the path. All right, so let's just, uh, I'll just uh, scrub along the timeline there and you can see he's kind of walking along that path. So we have that, uh, that uh, animation data, that constraint data baked into our motion plus file, uh, as well as the uh, path data as well. So once that's done, you want to make sure that uh, in the motion library, you uh, add your motion to the perform menu and then maybe call that, uh, you know, cart push whatever you want and um, you can export to uh, BVH, FBX, if you want to export the motion go to BVH um, and FBX export and then we can call this, uh, let's call this a uh, chimp slave because he's pushing a cart and uh, we can just target tool preset for this one I can choose Unity 3D for example and we want to include the animation and uh, you can go ahead and just export that we can export to uh, our desktop here and then press uh, OK. And that'll export the geometry along with a single animation to my desktop. All right, so let's go down to the desktop now. And you can see there we have Chimp Slave Cart Push. All right, so that's our FBX file. We can export that into, or import that rather, into Unity, into Maya, into any program you'd like. Um, and that's how easy it is to consolidate all of that uh, constraint data and uh, path data in addition to facial body animation. All the animation data you can import uh, with a Motion Plus file into FBX format. All right, so that's about all for this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something, and uh, stay tuned for more.